Hello everyone and welcome to Skill Cats. I'm Notorious Dub and let's be honest, we all have the problem of bottom fragging every now and then. And sometimes we string those bottom frags together and it actually feels like we're getting worse at the game. Well, don't worry, that's completely natural and even happens to pros on occasion. But even if the inconsistency isn't your biggest problem, there are a ton of different strategies that you can implement to maximize your kills in games and ways to fix the mistakes that you're making that are preventing you from picking up those kills. So today I'm gonna give you guys all the tips to help you stop bottom fragging in Valorant no matter what the reason is. But before we get into all the details, we have to get started with our question of the day, which is what map do you feel like you perform the worst on and why? For me, it has to be Haven because as a Raze and Viper player, it just doesn't fit very well with my playstyle. Personally, I like being able to lock down an area, bait enemies in, set up nice crossfires, but Haven is just so spread out that it feels like a ton of 1v1s all across the map and whatever team wins the most aim battles wins that round, which sometimes is fun. It's just not what I prefer, but maybe that's just because of who I'm playing. And I'm sure you guys have totally different experiences from me, which is exactly why I want to hear from you. So make sure to let me know in the comments down below what map you feel like you perform the worst on. And without further ado, the first and biggest tip I always like to give to people is to learn to deal with inconsistency. Everyone develops a hitch in their shot, a bad peeking habit, or becomes complacent over time. And all of these things affect your performance from game to game. Have you ever had a game where you're all over the place, clicking heads, picking up kills left and right, and the next game it feels like you can't even hit an enemy standing still or don't recognize an enemy that's right in your face. While that's also completely normal and comes from playing games without being conscious and critical of yourself throughout the game. And even if you are that way, sometimes you're just going to develop bad habits because there are so many uncontrollable factors that go into every round and every game, which helps you develop those bad habits. But luckily, there is a very simple way to fix this. Simply find you a routine that helps you ground yourself after every match. I used to go into practice mode and do a couple of rounds of easy bots and then do a couple of rounds of eliminate 50 and then hop back into a game. Nowadays, I and a ton people I know that found success developing consistency just use deathmatch and focus on having good mechanics during the deathmatch which is honestly a little bit more fun and more practical but no matter what routine you pick that works for you the goal is always to get yourself back to good habits after a game or two because you don't want your lows to get too low but you also don't want to let your highs get too high and that may sound crazy but what goes up must come down and whenever you have those super high highs that's when you're gonna crash the hardest so it's always good to reset after a taxing game so whether you did incredible or did bad in the game, take five minutes to reset yourself, develop those good habits again, and then hop back into the game. But remember, if you're serious about improving, go to skillcaps.com to unlock our hyper improvement system that will teach you how to win more gunfights, master your agent, and so much more. It's also backed by our rank improvement guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. So come join over half a million satisfied members of Skillcapped, improve that KDA, and get the rank you've always wanted at skillcap.com. Link is in the description below. And next we have a very important aspect to help you stop bottom fragging, which is play solo characters. And the whole thought process here is to become self-sufficient. Because whenever you're playing agents like Sova, Sage, Sky, Breach, all of these agents require a teammate to help you play to your full potential. And swapping off of these agents for a more solo playstyle character allows you to play to your own strengths and not have to rely on other people around you to determine your success in a round. These solo characters are people like Phoenix, Reyna, Jet, Cypher, Killjoy, or Wraith with Phoenix and Reyna being the two best characters for fragging because of their flash potential. And all of these agents have one thing in common, they can create space for themselves. And the space that they're creating for themselves allows themselves to be able to pick up kills on their own. This is so important because I see way too many people getting lost in the rounds because they aren't used to the role that they are forced to play in their team. And being able to play the same role every game because you're playing a self-sufficient character makes it so much easier to find your success game to game. And while obviously you can make any role work with any agent if you just keep your gun out and do what you're supposed to do, things like entry fragging or lurking with the sky just don't really make sense because she's such a slow agent that her utility is going to give away her position and she can't get her gun fast enough out to fully capitalize off of her utility. So if you're having trouble being inconsistent or just having those games where you're lost and can't seem to get anything going, add a couple of self-sufficient characters into your lineup to make your games that much simpler and easier to operate. And I think the best way to think about how you can start picking up more rounds is to look at different strategies from a 
attacker side and defender side. And one of my favorite ways to start picking up more kills on attacker side is to lurk more often. Right now we're in the run it down meta where teams are running multiple duelists and an omen, which leaves a ton of agents on the team with a great capability to lurk. And lurk kills are the easiest kills to pick up in the world. The lurker's job isn't to push up and face rush into the enemies on the other side of the map. The lurker's job is to find a seam where they can sneak up close to an enemy's rotation path and hide until they hear the footsteps of the rotation and shoot the unsuspecting enemies in the back. Like think about Haven, most defender teams don't hard peek mid and fight for control of mid throughout the entire round, which allows the attacker team to sneak up somebody into mid cubby if they want to. From there that person can never take contact and just sit and wait, letting their team make noise A site or C site, and since everyone loves to rotate through B to get to the other bomb sites faster, you have this perfect line of sight from cubby to shoot people on the rotation and open up the round for your team. And the same exact thing goes for split. But instead of sneaking up mid, just tuck at the entrance of market. Let your team run and make noise A, and whenever you hear the people in B heaven rotate through mid, peek out and snag those free kills on the rotating enemies. And if they decide to go through CT spawn instead to take the long rotation that's a little safer, take a little trip up mid through vents and flank them in A heaven because they didn't show mid pressure. But this type of lurk works on every single map. Simply walk up as far as you can without putting yourself in too much risk and listen for those rotates that you can abuse. And then on defender side, do you ever have the problem where you find yourself stuck on site with no one coming there, feeling like you're rotating every round and all while you're doing the job of locking down your bomb site, you're not seeing anyone the entire game. Well, this is a common problem and is dependent on where you're deciding to play on defender's side. And instead of picking one of the bomb sites specifically, you should play the fast rotator role. Like think about Haven, most Sovas like to play on C side, right? Well, although there might be a lot of games where the enemy favors C side heavily and that Sova gets a ton of action, inevitably there are going to be games where the enemies never go C site and Sova gets stuck in that no kill zone. Well, to counteract that, the fast rotator role would instead be the extra man on the bomb site. On Haven, there are three bomb sites that you have to hold and you add one person in garage that your team has to hold as well which leaves one extra person on your team that fifth man who will usually double up a or b and that person is the fast rotator the fast rotator is just the character that plays their bomb site normally but they leave at the first sound that their team hears that means a flash garage a smoke c someone taking an orb on a any information that you get where the enemies could be the fast rotator should leave their teammate alone that they're initially playing with and rotate to the noise that way you're maximizing your chance of running into enemies in the round and maximizing your impact in the game. And this role is honestly the biggest difference I see between pro teams, semi pro teams, and random ranked teams because it's very easy to have two people on a bomb site before the enemy start the execute. But the fast rotator being able to be the third man on site increases your chance of holding the site exponentially. And the fast rotator doesn't have to be the person in the middle of site crossing their fingers hoping to get a kill before they die. The fast rotator has the better job of playing off of the people on site and picking up and helping out with all of the kills on the people peeking them. The fast rotator role is not only the most underused and most important role in the game for defending teams, it's also the key to getting a ton of frags. So you might as well be the person to pick it up and start doing that for your team. And next up we have force buying off of losses. And this is one thing that I have been preaching recently, because with all of the professional tournaments going on, it becomes extremely obvious the differences between what happens in ranked play and what happens in pro play. In pro games there is almost never a round where a team full saves with their classics in hand. And for good reason. Because even though you may think the classic's right click is broken, it's very unreliable and just isn't going to pick you up very many kills. And although you shouldn't be forcing up to where you have to go a budget weapon on the next round when your team is going to be buying, you should be getting something. Because even if it means that you'll have to go light armor in the next round with your rifle, it's going to be worth it. And if you haven't actually heard me talk about light armor and heavy armor and how they function almost the same in game, the basic rundown is this. With the way the damage values add up, the only time that extra 25 health matters versus rifle is against the Phantom at 15 to 30 meters or when you're getting shot through a wall or headshot with the Phantom. Which means the Vandal at every range has the same time to kill on light armor as it does heavy armor and the Phantom at close range and long range has the exact same time to kill as well. So the only difference is really the middle ground with the Phantom and on headshots with the Phantom that the heavy armor matters. And pros realize that this tiny trade off is way more important than being able to have some kill pressure on those save rounds. And the best options right now are going to be the Bucky, my prediction to be the new save round meta. The Stinger, even though it's nerfed, it is still a DPS machine that can shred enemies if you can get up close to them. And the Sheriff, the one tap machine that most people with good aim that aren't playing close corners are going to go with. 
But if I had to suggest one thing here, run a couple of death matches with the sheriff every day. And over time, your save round win percentage will go through the roof and will get you a ton more kills and win you a ton more games just off of that alone. And finally, abuse the operator. Now I know we've all had those games where it seems like no matter where we go or no matter where our team goes, someone is dying to an operator every round. And on certain maps, it feels like it's unpreventable. Like on Icebox. Icebox is the operator's playground because there are so many different angles leading into a bomb site that you can't flash them all. And on top of that, there are so many different long sidelines that give the operator a ton of room to work around, change up positions, and constantly pick up the next frag. And on maps like Icebox and Haven, if you don't have one operator on the team, then you're really just not playing the map right. And I know, the operator crutch is as annoying to me as it is to anyone, but it does have its drawbacks. And for the 5,000 credit price tag, it is a super powerful weapon that you should be investing into and making sure that you keep in your team's hands. After all, there is a reason that almost all pro teams are running an operator on nearly every map. And not to mention, when the Vandal and the Phantom just don't seem to be hitting right, you can always just drop those weapons for an operator and I'm sure you'll be able to pick up at least a couple of kills with it. But remember, if you want to improve, win more gunfights, and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcaps.com. Link is in the description below. And as we close out the video, what do you think is the biggest tip for picking up and stopping bottom fragging is? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn those notification bells on because we here at Skillcaps have a ton more comprehensive premium guides coming your way that you're going to want to stay up to date with so you can stay ahead of the pack. As always, I want to thank you for spending this little bit of your day with us, and I'm Notorious Dub, signing off.